It was supposed to be the happiest day of his life. Byron had dreamed of being a pilot in the Air Force since he was a small child. Now, Byron was being commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. The ceremony was beautiful. Byron's parents and brother pinned on his gold bars, signifying his new rank in the Air Force. Byron's uncle gave him a silver dollar salute. This is where the new officer gives the first enlisted man who salutes the officer a silver dollar. And Byron's best friend, who had flown in just for the occasion, was bursting with joy and pride in seeing his friend's dream finally come true. Then, in one moment, all the excitement surrounding the day was gone. Byron was late to his capstone presentation because the commissioning ceremony ran late, and his capstone professor was none too happy. The professor threatened to fail Byron after all his hard work just because he was about 15 minutes late. It wasn't like Byron was trying to blow off the presentation. He tried as hard as he could to get there. But Denver traffic was not cooperating, and Byron, despite good intentions, was going to be punished. Failing the course did not just mean repeating another semester of school. It meant giving up his dream of being a pilot in the Air Force. The Air Force had given him orders to report for training in September, but those orders were dependent on Byron graduating college. If Byron had to repeat another semester, the Air Force would rescind the training orders and Byron's opportunity to be a pilot in the Air Force would be gone. It was in this moment that the cool, calm, and collected Byron appeared to crack. He walked away from his family and friends in disbelief and disappeared down a long hallway. Byron's best friend, however, would not let his buddy sulk alone. He pursued him down the hall and found Byron crying in the corner. The friend walked over to Byron and began to pray. Slowly but surely, Byron began to feel better. The tears began to subside, and the Byron his friend knew and admired began to appear once more. That simple prayer had more power than the friend could believe. Everything for Byron seemed to be falling apart right before his very eyes, and a simple prayer was able to lift Byron from the depths of despair to being more like himself again. I get asked all the time, why do you believe in prayer? So here is my response both now and forever. I believe in prayer because it works. There is no human reason or knowledge that can tell us why prayer works. It just does. It does because the God who created heaven and earth is on the other end hearing every last prayer and comforting those who humble themselves and admit that he is God and they are not. Prayer is an immensely powerful tool. How do I know for sure? Because I am Byron's best friend.